Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 13, the My Serious Terrace uh, edition of James Squared. I, I really miss, miss Mighty Mouse. That dude was so clutch offensively and defensively back in the day. So good. Uh, me, Lou, how are you? I'm doing okay. Hey, we've won two in a row, so uh, there's something to be optimistic about. So, yay. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, it feels and good. I know two. it was during Pittsburgh, and, you know, the Angels won their second series finally in the season. Um, the last one was what that sweep against the Marlins uh, in the second series of the league and, and, or of the season, I should say. So that was interesting. Uh, before that though, um, before we get to everything, excuse me, uh, make sure to subscribe to Halos in the Infield on YouTube and all around social media. Of course, Fernando does a great job on X with our account. Always has questions of the day. Um, Thursdays, Thursday mornings, was something about a memory. So you want to go there and see what other people uh, think. And it was the first um, recollection of Angels baseball. And let me answer that right now. Um, I think in 1991 or 1992, when the Angels were on... KTLA, I want to say. Uh, there was a thunderstorm near, or yeah, thunder and lightning. And I remember, I think my mom was watching the game, and I was just sitting there, just freaked out by thunder and lightning. I was like, I was a sissy back in the day. I was so young. But um, that's the first time I remember seeing angels because I remember seeing, you know, the, the, Football seats that were not filled up at all, but I saw the all angels, you know, on the field because there was all nine players on the field, yeah, or um, eight <laughs> players or whatever. No, nine. But um, that's my first recollection of um, Angels baseball. Do you remember what yours is, Milu? Yeah, I remember the late eighties. Well, I was going to Angels games when Reggie Jackson was on the team. I'm I'm a little bit older. But uh, when I when I really got an Angels baseball was probably the late '80s, early '90s, and I remember watching Angels games on KTLA, and they had uh, intros or like Devon White on his horse, and he catches the ball in, the cent in center field, and um, that was exciting for me. I remember as an early Angels fan. Um, yeah, K those KTLA days were something. Uh, and Brett. He was one of the the uh, TV TV guys, and uh, I forget who else it was. I, at Bill one Torrey. point, Dick Enberg, but that was uh, you know in the eighties, I believe, seventies and eighties. So yeah, that was fun. It's amazing to see, but uh, so many times Fernando will have questions of the days like that. That you really have to remember and think back. Yeah. And for some of us, that's harder because of certain reasons. Um, but yeah, make sure you follow Halos in the Infield on all the um, social media platforms X, Instagram, Facebook, um, uh, YouTube as well, where you can get the visual side of these podcasts. And if you want the audio side, if you don't want to see my ugly face, you go on believe.com. Has all the episodes there. Just look at um, like 6 a.m. on the morning on the West Coast. All the episodes will be there new. So um, check that out for the audio side of our podcast. Shout out to our sponsors. Uh, Nobel Works, 1623 or 1621 Sinclair Street. Uh, for free parking there. It's only like a 10-minute walk from there to the Angel uh, Stadium. And uh, look out for um, uh, drink specials there. Just get in touch with your local bartender there, and they should have the deal for you. A uh, good place to drink the sorrows away of Angels baseball. And then, if you're dying to go a game, uh, look no further than 714 
tickets. Seven one four tickets. Seven one four tickets. Call today, and you can go tonight. Believe it or not, and if you put H I T I or Heedy in the discount code, you'll get ten percent off tickets. And that I, I I get my tickets on seven one four now because he lives in the infield, you know, and 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 I got tickets one time. I think it was for this season. Well, tickets are dirt cheap right now, but you can get tickets for. Uh, I got club level seats. These are the you know the padded seats. Yep. For four dollars. That's amazing here, and that's a that's a good look. I mean, it's not a good look for the team, but it's a good look for your wallet or your right. digital wallet or whatever. Um, I'm doing my my best not to go, but we'll see what eventually happens. I've been out of it. I know I said I was supposed to go to some games, but I didn't. Um, it just didn't happen. But with the low prices of 714 tickets and the Angels without certain players, makes it affordable for the whole family to go. Or even people you don't, you don't like. You could just go with them, too. Um, so Our neighbors up the north, they love coming to Angel Stadium, and they love well, those discount tickets, too, believe it or not. They love that stadium. Spend those your money bad. and spend your money and leave. Um, or don't spend your money. Whatever. I don't know how to protest against Artie and all this. All right. So let's get to the uh, couple of weeks that were. We had last week off, health issues, among other things. Uh, the Angel Homestand was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Four and 11 on the season at home, by the way. Four and 11. Not good. That's one of the worst in the league, I would think. Uh, low five, I would say, in that league. Or in the league, I should say. Um, we'll start off, I think, with Minnesota. That uh, weekend series, 26, 27, 28. <sighs> Minnesota came in. They're riding the winning streak. and ended up at 12. Um, of course, shadowing. But uh, they swept the Angels three straight. The Angels lost uh, 5-3. Uh, 16 to 5, in which we saw Aaron Hicks throw an inning on that Saturday, and then 11 to 5, Minnesota uh, spanked the Angels on that Sunday. Uh, that series just had bad outings by pitchers. Um, the offense was here and there, but no, never was enough because of the pitching giving up runs. Then the Phillies came in, and you thought, oh, God, it's only going to get worse. I predicted a sweep in my head. The Angels somehow won and held on 6-5 to five on that Monday on the 29th of April and then proceeded to lose uh, the 30th, 7-5. to five. And then to start May, they lost 2-1, to one, and you were at that game. Give us a quick uh, synopsis of that game since you were there. Well, one exciting thing. There wasn't much going on that day, but we did have an earthquake there. That was interesting. I actually felt it while sitting in right field. That was that was something, I guess. Um, we didn't get the win, but we got to feel a little something. So uh, I was sitting with my girlfriend, and we were sitting there, and I had my leg over the chair. And she's all, are you shaking your leg? I'm like, no. And then we, these guys are sitting next to us in the in Brewery X across the way, and everyone's, like, looking at each other, and we're like, was that an earthquake we just felt? And it turns out it was like a 4.7 out of Corona. So we were right, you know, Corona's right down the road. So that was pretty close. That was interesting. I don't think I've ever felt an earthquake at the stadium before. But as far as the game goes, uh, it was a close one. We we held on, you know, as long as we could until the Phillies finally broke through uh, later on in the game. And uh, Taylor Ward almost won the game by inches. I think he was just the warning track shy of a game-winning home run, and that was kind of depressing after that, and we lost. So all in all, it was a beautiful day at the game. Uh, the weather was great. But once again, the Angels just come up short. That sounds, like, 
that sounds <laughs> like a, a normal um normal occurrence you know um yeah. just coming up short or we get blown out of the water so for that too i uh i i think i was watching it i didn't feel the earthquake at all i'm down here in oceanside but uh i heard all about it and uh i was watching the phillies uh feed because now i want to see other people's joy at angel games yeah. so i watch or listen to other people's feeds um I have to give a shout out to uh, I think it's what Tom God I forgot his first name who does the Phillies and John Crook. Oh, John Crook! I, I didn't know I he was love, doing the game. I love John Crook. He does the Phillies games there. Yeah, he's great. He's great. Um, and Tom, I want to say McDonald. I forget his McCarthy. Tom McCarthy, excuse me. He does a tremendous job for um. Uh, the Phillies, I think he does NFL and CBS as well, maybe some college games. Uh, but it's refreshing to hear another um, uh, broadcast. I, I, I really like that. They were having fun, but they also criticized one of their own players and the Angels players for, you know, misplay. And it's just something we never really hear unless it's Mark Langston. You know, you don't really hear Gooby get after the players after a mishap and i think that was refreshing no doubt about or, it or wayne rendazzo you know he likes to he's never afraid of giving his own two cents on air true. which i love by the way true yeah but it was kind of refreshing just to hear someone else i think plus a winning side of baseball i kind of i kind of miss that <laughs> yeah all right so the angels had uh last thursday off uh Second, then they went on a road trip, and it started off well uh, at Cleveland for three straight games, and they won. They shut out the Guardians 3 nothing. The Guardians, by the way, having a heck of a season this year so far. Um, BB somehow got the loss. Soriano pitched very, very well that day. Um, it was a really, really interesting uh, ball game, at least for the Angels, I should say. Uh, Shawnee Will had a home run down the right field line, and it stayed fair and gone. Um, uh, Logan O'Hoppy doubled in the run. Mickey Moniak had a long home run to right center field. That was amazing. A three-run shot to make it 5-0. Ward had a sacrifice fly to make it 6 nothing in the fifth. And that's all they needed. And it was really great to see the pitching that day. Then Saturday happened, and that's when things started to go off the rails on the crazy train. Uh, Cleveland won 7-1. to Lively got the win. Detmers got the loss. He did not fare well. It was unfortunate to see. Uh, Hedges had a home run. Uh, Hedges, which, who was batting, what, 130-something? Yeah. Hedges, I, Austin Hedges. I knew him here in San Diego. Yeah. And he was a great fielding catcher, no right. doubt about it. But he couldn't hit anything. And uh, he got a two-run home run back in the top of the or bottom of the second there. Ramon Liriano, we knew him very well. Yeah, Todd loves that guy unless he doesn't. Uh, he had a home run to make it three nothing. Arianza had a uh, juicy a fly out to uh, left fielder and make it three to one. Uh, Bo Naylor hit a grand slam that made it seven to one and just totally um, put that game away. And then uh, on Sunday, the Angels lost four to one to lose the series. Carrasco got the win and Canning got the loss. Canning wasn't too bad, and Classe got the save. It was just uh, again too much of the Guardian um, offense. I think at the right time. Adele did start the game with sacrifice fly in the second, but then Jose Ramirez had a two-run home run that really blew that game open for Cleveland in the bottom of six. And then uh, Josh Naylor, who you knew was not going to be quiet the whole series, uh, had a two-run home run um, in the bottom of the eighth, and uh, you knew it was over from there. Uh, Milu, your quick thoughts about that Cleveland series? Well. Let me tell you this, if you didn't already know, this was our 
12 straight series loss in Cleveland. <sighs> dating back to when they were still the Indians. So we haven't won there since like 2010 or something like that. I believe, or I don't know exactly when we started the, the losing streak to the, the Indian slash guardians, but it's, it's been a long streak, 12 straight series losses. And those Naylor boys, they always seem to get us. And I don't think they're of relation, but it's just funny that both of them. Yeah. It's their brother. His brother. Absolutely. They're brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I didn't know that. I didn't know they were brothers. Uh, you learn something new every day. Do your homework, Jay Money. But um, they kill us. Seems like every every time we play the Guardians, they kill us, both the Naylor boys or anybody else on that team for that matter. I don't know what it is psychologically. It's our, in our head now that mentally we can't win in Cleveland. They come out here in a few weeks, so hopefully we give them a little payback. This is coming, hopefully. But that series as a whole, we could have did a lot better. I think we had to lead one of those games, but we did win one of those games, seven to four. That was the opening game, and then the rest of the series was just trash. But yeah, we need to we need to get payback on those guardians for sure. We'll see if that happens. That's what May 24, 25th, 26th come out. It'll be right. cruncher weekend that weekend. I dare you to come out for the cowboy hat on Friday and the post game concert yeah. for Kit with Kit Moore, whomever that may be, and fireworks as well. I dare you to come out for that and use 714 tickets. All right. So that was Cinco de Mayo weekend. Go to May 6th, the new series in Pittsburgh. Ah, more of the same. He just lost again, uh, four to one. Uh, Edward Olaves had a home run, a grand slam, by the way, to left field. Like the third uh, one we've given up in the last month. Anderson Come. had that Second cutter. One. Anderson had that cutter that just was right down the middle. It was perfect, perfect for Olivares to hit that. That was in the bottom of the third. Neto had a home run to center. It was four to one, but that was pretty much it. Anderson was doing well up until that point. He went to two and four. Mitch Keller got his third win. He's uh, three and three. Uh, Tuesday came and the Angels uh, shut out the Pirates nine to nothing. Now I didn't see it. I was busy. Uh, maybe I shouldn't be watching. Maybe they'll win. But that uh, was a Patrick, great game. Patrick Sandoval was amazing. Uh, didn't give up much. That was kind of a, a shocker to me just because of what happened the night before. Some clutch hitting there by the uh, Pirates. But in that game, uh, Sandoval went seven innings, which was a shocker. Only three hits given up. No one runs, of course. One walk and then um, seven strikeouts. That's the Sandoval that everybody talks about in WBC and then in 2021 and 2022. That's the send of all you need to see. It's not going to happen all the time, of course. But Kevin Pillar in that game, James, went off. He had a home run in the top of the fourth. He made it a 3 nothing with that three-run home run. That was really shocking to see. I didn't know what to expect offensively from Kevin Pillar. We know him, of course, as one of those tremendous fielders. who will go all out for a baseball, either leaping or diving. Uh his days from the Toronto Blue Jays. He's so amazing. And then the top of the seventh, he had another home run to make it seven to nothing. Uh, I think that was probably the, the two highlights of the game that you needed to see. It was nine nothing, uh, Angels, and that shut out. And then uh, yesterday, um, Angels actually won the series. They won five to four in a nail biter there. Amazing. Back, back and forth affair. Adam Simber got the win. Estevis got his sixth save. Uh, it started off in the top of the third. Joe Adele hit his fifth home run, another solo shot, make it one nothing. And then he singled in Drury to make it two nothing. So it was the Adele show. Um, in bottom of the fifth, though, Cruz, Old Neil Cruz, he's one of those young, good players, throws rockets from third base. He's uh, He's pretty amazing there. Uh, Joey Bart. 
who I found out plays for the Pirates. I didn't know where he was. Remember, yeah. he was that failed prospect to uh, to take the over for, for Posey in San Francisco. Right. Uh, Cruz brought in, um, or he cleared the bases, I should say, uh, with that uh, double, made it three to two. Connor Joe, the kid from Poway, had a single that brought a home cruise in that inning in the uh, bottom of the fifth to make it four to two. Then top of the six, Pilar had the single to make it um, RBI single to make it a four to two. Logan O'Hoppy had a single to make it four to three. And then Brandon Drury had a double, and I was hoping that ball was going to go out. But that left field, it just keeps going out and out and out. There's a little corner there, and it makes it really tough for a ball to get out. Anyway, he had an RBI double to tie it at four. Um, that that was cool to see. And then the Angels added on another run. Uh, let's see, later on, they had Willie Calhoun had to sacrifice fly in that uh, bottom of the, or sorry, top of the six to make it 5-4. And then the Angel pitching came in Simber with the energy coming off the mound. Had some clutch outs there. Really good trust in him. And then again, Estevez had the save. So, James, what was your impression of the uh, Pirates series? Well, it was a total team effort. And I... <clears throat> the game yesterday, you saw everybody pulling their weight. Um, from pitching standpoint, Soriano did pitch, what, four or five innings, and he gave it up, but <clears throat> he's pitching really well. And that's because he's not quite as stretched out as a starter yet, but that will, he will, you know, he will become stretched out at, at, at one point. It's still a, a work in progress with Soriano. So a lot of good things from him, but I, I just like the way we we played overall. And that's more of the Angels baseball that Ron Washington plays. Uh, we don't have many power hitters anymore for right now, but it was a, you know we we were getting guys on base and bringing them in, and we showed that resili resiliency that we were showing at the start of the season when we had Rendon and Trout, of course, with these younger guys. So. It was a good series overall. I was impressed with Sandoval in that second game. And I was just impressed with Kevin Pillar, who mm -hmm. we acquired last week, right before we went on the road trip. So a uh, good defensive outfielder. It, it, like you said, he'll lay out for anything. Um, and apparently gets still hit at 35 years old. So that's a good sign. So taking over for Trout. And he's a, a bench guy for the most part, but I was impressed with Joe Adele even, you know, Joe Adele's really coming into his own this season. He just needs to play every day. Mm -hmm. And of course he's still going to make those mistakes, but at this point it's either feast or famine. It's either you go, you go all out or, you know, he's doing really well. So I was impressed with this series against the pirates. The pirates are just as bad as we are pretty much. They have a little better record, but we should be beating teams like this. And we actually did our job for our second series win of the season. So upwards and onwards. So, yeah. Yeah, I really uh, didn't think that series was going to go the way it did, but it did. No, I didn't either. Um, the standings. It was a, it was a uh, the Angels are now in fourth place, 14 and 23. They are uh, seven games out. Houston, with all their injuries, they have six injured starting pitchers, I want to say. They are 12 and 24 and last at eight and a half back. Texas has risen. They lead Seattle by one game. They just got uh, Robbie Grossman back via trade from the White Sox. Um, Seattle's 20 and 17. They're, what, uh, one game back of them. And then the surprising A's are 18 and 21. They are uh, four games out. And by the way, I got to shout out the Washington Nationals. Somehow they're 500, 18 and 18. Uh, good for third place in the NL West. I, I just had to give them a shout out. It's kind of a uh, surprising uh, record. By the way, the road trip Cleveland, um, 
they lead their uh, division right now at 24 and 13. They're just getting hits at the right time uh, somehow. And Pittsburgh is in third place, uh, 17 and 21 in their division in the Central, five games back of uh, Milwaukee and the Cubs. So they're right in the thick of things, but they're dangerously falling. I do have to mention some things with uh, the Angels. Cole Tucker was uh, brought on to be a a player on the roster. Uh, He kind of looks like Sideshow Bob to me, but um, he's added some speed, kind of some hitting there, and a a decent third base uh, play in the uh, infield. But to get to what has hurt the Angels all season long, and the reason I haven't really had to change my uh, banner here, the injury bug continues with the Angels. It's just going to be on every show. Mike Trout, as you know, had the injury uh, playing with a torn meniscus. He had to have surgery. He's out, what, three months, they say, but it's probably six months for the rest of the season. I don't think the Angels want to say that just because of the ticket sales. Well, it's floundering anyway. Why does it matter? Most recent news, though, Drury exited... uh, the game yesterday with left hamstring tightness. He's probably going to go on the IL. Uh, the Angels uh, today did bring up, or um, sorry, trade from the Braves, uh, get uh, Luis uh, Goulermé. How do you say his name? I'm sorry, Milu. Yeah, I think it's Goulermé. Or we don't exactly know the if he's such a new player. This is the first Guillaume. time I've heard of him, actually. Sorry, we'll just Guillaume. call him Guillaume. 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 Yeah, Guillaume. Luis Guillaume. And he's uh, a third baseman, second baseman. He could play pretty much all over the infield. And uh, he's a 258 career hitter. He has five career home runs. Um, you said he he put on some hero- heroics when he was with the Mets like 10 years ago. He caught a bat. <laughs> Yeah, that's his like one highlight that I remember that went viral. Uh, there was a a, a bat that was from a from a player at the plate, and uh, Guillaume just caught it like this and threw right. it back. So it was very cool. He looked like um most most interesting man in the world on that uh, viral play, uh, but he's here because of the jury injury. It just seems like he has. Nagging injuries, Drury. Uh, this time, he had trouble with his left leg while legging out a double uh, in the fifth inning. And then a blue pit that he came around to score with, uh, he was removed again. It seems like he did that before. Uh, Luis Renjifo on Tuesday uh, is expected to return this homestand. Remember, he had blisters um, from the illness that he's dealing with. Some irritation. That just sounds terrible. Uh, in his feet. And that'll that'll mess with you. That that'll definitely mess with you. Yeah. Again, Mike Trout with that torn meniscus, 10 to 15 IL days, but it, it's probably gonna be more. Let me just let me not sugarcoat that. Uh, Miguel Sano, he had that left knee inflammation. He'll be back sometime this month and uh, definitely missing his energy. Uh, he had a soreness with his surgically repaired left knee. Memory dropped all those pounds like I should. And um, he was doing very, very well. But uh, he was put on the IL. Uh, Zanaga hopefully will be back this month along with uh, Silseth. And uh, we'll see if that will be the case. Cisnero also had an injury with inflammation in his right shoulder. Somehow I think he'll be back this uh uh, month, but Anthony Rendon. It seems like his hamstring issue, his strain, it's just getting worse. He's been out since April twentieth, and now it, the expected return is probably, possibly mid season. But to me, it feels like August, or not it's, at all. Yeah, that's the feeling when I when I hear that. Um, I just don't know, but it's a partial tear in that hamstring, a high grade partial tear. So that can mean anything. 
Um, so that's the injury news there. There's just too much with Rendon where you don't think he's coming back. The same with Trout. Again, if you saw, Trout was very, very just uh, distraught, I think, by missing another uh, chunk of the season. And this now has been uh, another season like this because uh, I was looking up – I'm sorry, there was a, a um, note about all of his injuries through uh, the last, I want to say, uh, four years. No, since 2018. It's been a wrist injury, 2019, a foot injury, a calf injury in 2021, 22, there was a back and rib injury, 23 was a hand and a shoulder, and then now a meniscus tear. He's played less than 120 games in each season since 2020. Of course, the COVID year was 60. Um, but before that, too, in um, in Florida, in Miami, he had a thumb injury, if you recall, uh, sliding in the second one year. That's so, what started all of his injuries right there. That's why I that mentioned was, that. That was his first big injury, I remember. And he was out for, I'm like, uh-oh, here we go. Yeah. You know. And you thought he was, um, you know, uh, relentless to injuries. But right. It's not the case. So um, let's get to something positive. But um, the Missouri teams come in, Milu. Uh, with the four-game series starting uh, Thursday night uh, with the Kansas City Royals. And the surprising Kansas City Royals, Milu, they are in second place, I want to say, in that – yeah, no, I'm sorry, third place in that AL Central. Who had that? But it's refreshing because they went out and got a couple of San Diego starters. They also bolstered their bullpen and somewhat their lineup. They – uh, were able to lock up Witt Jr. Uh, for some years. So they don't have to worry about him leaving. He took a team-friendly long-term contract, which uh, you're starting to see now around the major leagues. Tatis Jr. for San Diego, Seattle, uh, with, um, uh, what's his name, uh, Rodriguez, and then um, Corbin Carroll with Arizona. So it's refreshing. Uh, they're only two and a half back in that AL Central, where four teams are doing well, and then you have the White Sox. Uh, so it's a, it's amazing yeah. to see the uh, Royals do well. Again, it's a four-game series, and today we'll be on FS1, surprisingly. So for all of you, um, no. or Thursday night, I should say, um, for all of you, you know, out of market, it'll be on uh, nationally, which that's a shock. And Friday night will be on Apple TV Plus. Yikes. Uh, Yikes. <laughs> I don't know why people would want to see that, but, uh, you know, damn it. There it is. Uh, so let's get to some pitching matchups. So Michael Walker, the San Diego uh, former Padre, will start tonight for the Royals. And then for uh, the Angels starter tonight as my – uh, Detmers will start, and he's got to do, um, he's got to do so much better than his last start. Uh, so that would be interesting. I think um, Drury knows Waka more, but I don't know if he's going to play. Of course, uh, Friday night with um, Kansas City and the Angels, you have uh, Marsh pitching for Kansas City. And then Griffin Canning, Alec Marsh, one of their uh, young players, 25 years of age. And then Canning, hopefully not looking up to give up that big, big, you know, hit at the wrong time. Canning now with a 6.69 ERA. At least it's going down. Remember, it was like at 9-something at one point. But uh, finally, that's going down. Again, that game on Apple TV on Friday. Uh, Saturday. Uh, Regans, one of their uh, young pitchers as well for Kansas City, will go. Cole Regans, 26 years of age. And then Tyler Anderson, trying to make up for the one mistake he did in um, Pittsburgh, will go Saturday. And then Sunday afternoon, it'll be um, Seth Lugo, the former Padre starter. He's 5-1 and one this year, so he's going to be very good and very tough. Uh, Patrick Sandoval will go Sunday. Uh, for the Angels, day game, Sunday, 
Sandoval, I don't like that. How do you think the Angels will do in this four-game series, Milu? Well, I'm thinking they split. And I won't go beyond that because I think, you know, that we're so inconsistent. Many people are going to say, oh, we're going to get lose three or three four because, you know, they're – their record states that they're better, but they're still the Kansas City Royals. So I'm going to say we split the series. That would be nice. Um, we'll see how their offense does. We'll get to know their hitters. Sure. Last year, um, MJ Melendez had a tremendous uh, season series against the Angels, home and away for the Royals against the Angels. That was one guy that just – killed the Angels last year, so look out for him. It's always a treat to see Salvador Perez, their captain, yeah. as he has kind of transitioned from catcher to DH, back and forth here and there. He's getting older. And surprisingly, he's not wanting to leave to win, to go win elsewhere. He's writing this uh, career out with the Royals, which is commendable in a way. Um, for Salvador Perez, he's one of the good guys in the game. Um, so that's one half of the Missouri homestand. Um, 13, 14, 15th, the Cardinals come in, and they are struggling uh, beyond belief. I mean, last year, you remember, in St. Louis, in May, the Angels swept the Cardinals. And you thought to yourself, this, is the, this isn't the same Cardinals teams from years past. They had one of their worst seasons in 50 years last season, and they're on their way to do the same this year. They're 15 and 21, last place in the uh, NL Central. Some things about the Cardinals. Uh, I wanted to see Jordan Walker, but he was sent down again for his defensive issues. He's kind of like Adele, but he's a better hitter. Uh, but I don't think you'll see him. Uh, Nolan Arenado is there at third base, the former um, South Orange County product out of um, uh, he was a former Rocky, I should say, trade to St. Louis. And then Paul Goldsmith is their first baseman there. Uh, they have just a bunch of starters who are uh, older, like Lance Lynn, among others. And they're really struggling. They don't really have a leader. I thought Arenado was going to be that guy, but he's not. Goldsmith is a Kind of a quiet player. He goes about his business. So they're really struggling. And I thought all this time in this pull hole series, I thought we were going to see uh, these two play each other in the World Series last decade. But it never, ever happened. I was very disappointed by that. Not even close. I, no, <laughs> not, not for the Angels at least. But for the Cardinals, I thought they were going to at least uh, win one championship and play the Angels in the World Series. But... So many factors of that happened. Um, I don't know if you want to give a prediction for this, but for me with that Kansas City series, I think the Angels lose three out of four. I think the Kansas City starters are very good. Their bullpen, I think, is one of the best in the league. Um, but not knowing the starters for the um, for the Cardinals and Angels, I guess I'll hold my judgment for that uh, Cardinal prediction. But we'll get back that we'll get on that um, after that series is over. By the way, I think um, all the games are night games. I want to say in that Cardinal series, it is. Um, and then the Angels again will have the Thursday off. Then they go to Houston to have a two-step uh, Texas two-step with the um, the uh, Rangers, and then Houston, and then like you mentioned. Uh, Cleveland will come in 24th, 25th, 26th. And then the Yankees will come in to end uh, May, that homestand, and then the Angels go to Seattle. But finally, James, we will see a divisional opponent with Texas uh, next week. It's just Which weird. It's going to be important because they're yeah. at the top of the division right now. See, the Angels, I I'm not going to honk my honk or anything, but the Angels – we're only seven games out with like, we still have 120 something games to play and the angels ha still have a realistic. It's shocking. Still have a, a real realistic shot at the AL West 
right now because of the fluctuation between teams. Seattle's good right now, but they're bad. I think they were losing to the Twins. Um, Texas is now on top, but they keep, you know, there's somebody new each week now. The Oakland A's, they're suddenly good with all their talent, their young talent. But the Angels are still, albeit seven games out, they could be right there within the next week or two if they play good baseball. I'm not going to hold my breath, but I'm just saying the AL West is still up for grabs. Anybody, even the Astros can win this division right now. So um, I'm thinking it's going to be, it's going to be really interesting facing. We need to win uh, against AL West opponents. And that's how you win your division is by beating the people in your own division. And that's very important for the angels to do. We couldn't do that in years past. We always have a horrible record amongst the AL West. So that being said, my prediction for the St. Louis series, I think we take two out of three. They're reeling right now. They just lost Wilson Contreras or catcher mm -hmm. due to a uh, JD Martinez, uh, karate chop to the, with his bat onto his forearm, which broke his forearm, which is terrible. Mm -hmm. He was having a great season. And uh, I think they were trying to blame. I think they tried to say that J.D. Martinez did it on purpose, but clearly it was an accident. It was horrible. Um, so I, we wish Wilson Contreras all the best. But, um, yeah, this team just needs to be more consistent. And with our players, it's, it's, it's going to be hard. With who we have, we have a triple A lineup right now, mm -hmm. but we're seeing signs <laughs> of breaking out of some slumps. So I'm, I'm really, I'm trying to be optimistic about the next couple of series. I think the Royals, that's going to be another test for the angels are good this year. And, but St. Louis is more playing down to the angels level. They're more on the same level as the angels right now. So we'll see that's, that should be a pretty good series, but all in all, the key is we finally get to face AL West opponents starting next week, later next week. So that's going to be, that's going to be key. So I can remember Ron Washington at his press yeah. conference, his first yes. one mentioning, Hey, uh, we want to rule the West or whatever he said. Yeah, that, that probably won't happen, but uh, I like yeah. your lodge takes here. I know I, I'm honking my honk, as <laughs> Todd and the boys like to say, but um, someone's got to be optimistic, right? I'm forever optimistic about this team, even though they let us down each and every time, it seems like. But we'll see. Exactly. Uh, by the bad. way, the Royals come in. They took two out of three against Milwaukee, first place Milwaukee. Yeah. So they're coming in um, kind of hot. But they had a home series there against Milwaukee. I was able to catch, I think, the Monday of that series. So they're a really good team, and we haven't been able to say that about Kansas City. But uh, that's going to be fun with Bobby Witt Jr., among others, on that Royals uh, lineup. It's just fitting you say the AAA lineup the Angels have. Man, it already feels like August and September with the lineup the Angels are putting out. With all the injuries and whatnot. It, it no, feels like spring training never ended. That's what it feels like. Yeah, I <laughs> we wish were was the case. We were winning in spring training, so that's the exactly. only thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Why is Sandoval on the May cover of the... Oh, no, he did pitch oh, well the last time he's out. But the wall calendar, I keep oh, looking up, I'm like, ugh. So I'm looking at the schedule. Anyway, um, go to, again... Go to um, all of our social media platforms for coverage of the Angels and Believe Network for the podcast form like this. Uh, YouTube for all the podcasts, the visual side. Go to No Boy All Works for some suds and some good times, good talks, and meeting up with people and whatever the case is. Only a 10-minute walk from Angel Stadium, free parking right there. Don't got to worry about anything. And go to 714 Tickets. 714 Tickets. 714 Tickets. Call today, and you can go tonight. And it's you so see, true. You can see the advertisement out in left field out on the bullpen if you're uh, you know, facing the field, by the way. 
Um, but yeah, go out and see these Royals. You know, see how young they are and see how a organization is building. And uh, a real come, organization. Yeah, I mean, I'm holding judgment to say that, but yeah, because they haven't really won anything either. But, but I they're mean, young though. You they're feel young. Like they're building something, unlike others. Right. Uh, they're they're going in the right direction. If you want to see the opposite, go see the Cardinals next week. And the Angels, yeah. I should say. All right, Malou, we're going to get out of here. But thank you, everyone, for watching the 13th episode. Shout out again, Meisters Terrace. I miss you so much. Uh, Mighty of, Meister. I miss Angel. that guy, too. Oh, God, he was so good. James uh, Squared, we're out. And we'll see you next time. Later, folks. Deuces. Go Halos. <laughs>